for so long and uh, I've been able to like slowly kind of trace back possible like reasons for that. My uh, grandmother, uh, she had a cut off braid in her like vanity drawer in her bedroom and I would just sneak in there when I was like seven and just take a look at it because I was mesmerized by the fact that this is a medium that outlives us and this braid was a portrait of her youth. I started becoming really like you know, fascinated with, you know, how, how big of a role it plays in our identities and in our, like, ability to communicate who we are. And I just love, you know, like, how sculptural it gets. And so I ended up, like, also starting to see that it's like a line, like a piece of string of hair. It's like a line on a paper drawn with a pencil. So in the end, you know, I feel like I'm drawing or painting with this. I think it brings out you know, creative qualities in all of us because we can't avoid having a creative decision you know, made when we decide if we're going to do something with our hair or not. It's like the remnant of the beast in us and I think that we are constantly trying to tame it. And uh, that to me is like such a beautiful romantic thing. My name is Rapnildur Arnardóttir but I'm called Shoplifter or Shopi for short. I uh, lived in New York for 20 years, but uh, I come from Iceland. When I moved to New York, I was going to have everybody learn to say Hrafnildur. But in the first month, you know, it just totally collapsed, the whole plan, because uh, somebody heard me uh, um, I said, Oh, nice to meet you, shoplifter. And I just went with that as a joke, and it stuck. Maybe we should take, like, some uh, um, the pliers okay. and just kind of bend it in a little bit, yeah. I work a lot in uh, site-specific installations, but I also make sculptures and wall murals. Uh, my signature medium has been synthetic hair and human hair for the past like uh, 15 years, I guess. I'm just trying to tame hair, tame the beast. <laughs> Maybe we need two, like on each side and meet kind of, I don't know, it's good. When I was asked to participate in uh, Day for Night Festival, they suggested this uh, caged off area would be perfect for me to install my work in. Or it became like a inspiration for the material to attach the hair onto. So I ended up working with metal fences that I've been folding and bending and like shaping into like sculptures. It was a very like challenging process but to my surprise you know it became like quite easy to create beautiful shapes out of such a not organic material. Awesome. So we have uh, in my studio in New York, where I live, I had assistants uh, creating these uh, hair bundles out of white hair for a few months. There's a lot of hair here, and uh, we shipped it all down here. And then we started attaching the hair with zip ties onto the structure. It's like a skeleton of a beast. The beast is called Ghost Beast. So I wanted to create some sort of like a mysterious animal because you know the fur is it's like a teddy bear it's like a big bird gone wrong i feel like i'm almost like drawing in the space and painting in the space it's like the paintbrush is now the surface my piece is like a moss that is integrated into the building and just growing and moving once i had the space all built out and the structure of the sculpture in the space or the installation then I start projecting onto it an animation made by Duncan Ransom from the Endless Collective. They're most famous for doing the animation in the film Gravity. And so in this uh, animation, we used white hair and then project onto that like colorful moving fur. So in order to like, you know, make this static installation come alive and be very trippy, and uh, create like an elevated mood, you know, and kind of like a mysterious world. It's like meant to feel like this uh, ghost beast is hibernating. And at some point in the sequence of the animation, it starts to have feeling or some feeling. So it starts to go all crazy in colors and there's like a stuff going on, you know, in the belly of the beast. 
and then you you know there's a one eye that opens up and it looks around and it goes back to sleep. I created a soundscape to go with it. It's like meant to be felt in your chest more than heard. It's not music, it is more like a soundscape atmospheric and it's what I imagine the sound is inside the belly of the beast really. A heartbeat and breathing and uh, just the interior landscape of sounds. I would like, you know, the visitors and you know the viewers to experience like kind of entering into this like magical world of our childhood uh, cartoon uh, stories that had all these amazing landscapes like Dr. Seuss is a big inspiration obviously. <laughs> I kind of would like to see people like experience an altered reality without any drugs. From colors, I believe colors are like really important uh, in elevating our moods in a positive way. I think that the movement and just like being in this like environment of like, it's almost like underwater, but not. And you kind of washed in these colors. It's almost like showering you with this fuzzy feeling and this general like euphoria of a different reality. Almost like a dream, like a sleepwalking awake. <laughs> so that's my goal. And just to create experiences for people where they can experience interior happiness. And I think that when we're happy, we tend to treat each other more kindly.